today's video, I'm so excited to share with all of you my favorite tips and tricks for storing fresh produce and our other dried goods in our pantry that we use the most. Hi there, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica and I'm a holistic nutritionist and a nutritional therapy practitioner. Over the years in many of my ingredient and meal prep videos, I've shared on and off how I store different produce items but I realized I don't have an entire video dedicated to this methodology and the ways that we can store our produce to ensure that we get maximum shelf life from them. Also in a way that we can actually see the produce that we have once we've washed or chopped it or prepared it. That way we can actually utilize the ingredients that we have. Therefore they don't sit in the refrigerator and go bad. So I'm excited to hang out with you guys today. I've gone ahead and cleared off the countertop. I actually went to the grocery store yesterday. I left everything as is. So I'm just going to be pulling it out of the refrigerator, tossing it here on the countertop. We're going to wash the ingredients, get them prepped and ready to go. And then I'm going to share with you how I store them to ensure that we can maximize the length of time that they last. So I've pulled out all of the fresh produce that I got yesterday. We're gonna start here and then we'll move into some different dried goods, but I'm going to wash and prep everything first. I've shared this in so many of my videos. I will link a video for you up here in the cards of how I actually create my meal plans, how I shop for my meal plans, then how I actually prep and wash the foods that I'm going to be preparing for those meal plans. So I will link that for you up here in the cards but similarly to that, the first thing that we want to do is pull everything out of the fridge. All of the fresh produce that you've gotten, let's get it out of the fridge, let's take a peek at what we have, let's wash it, let's put it into a container or into a bag. The type of storage that will work best for the produce that we're working with. But the second that we wash it, prep it and get it ready, we're definitely 73% more likely to utilize that produce. So what I'm going to do is go through all of this, wash everything, then we'll start to strategically put it away in different storage containers. Our grapes are clean. I'm going to pop them on a kitchen towel, let them dry off a little bit. And then as far as grapes go, I like to store them in the crisper drawer. So I'm gonna put that like up here. Grapes, <laughs> crisper drawer. And the reason so is that they do need it to be pretty cool for them to stay fresh so they don't get soggy. Another thing that I have noticed over the years of storing different produce items is the hat. The grapes, they do need a little bit of air circulation, but not too much. Hence why grape bags do have those tiny little holes. And you know, and I go back and forth with a lot of my clients because some of my clients will wash everything and then it doesn't last as long because it's not stored properly or they don't wash their produce and then they don't use it because it's not washed. So we need to find a happy medium. And my approach to this is that I used to store my grapes in this really large Ikea 365 glass jar. And the glass, I would prop the lid on, but the glass was almost too airtight. So I have picked up, which I'm pretty darn anti-plastic. Like I don't use much plastic in our home. I'm, there's very little plastic, but obviously your produce comes in plastic bags, okay? So then, or, and or when you purchase it, you put it in a plastic bag sometimes. Um, so obviously our, our food is coming into contact with plastic. So I had to have like a come to Jesus moment with myself. This is me working through the process with you guys. Um, and I decided like, you know what? If the produce will last longer, I'm getting BPA free. I'm not putting hot foods in it. It's going to be okay. So I did buy this snapware. It's just at Costco. Um, and the reason I do this is I notice when I prop the lid on, it's just enough air circulation and the grapes last significantly longer. So we wanna enjoy our foods, we wanna get all the nutrients, we wanna do it in a safe and healthy way, and we don't wanna be wasteful. So 
you know, it's hard because sometimes I feel like we all feel the pressure of doing everything all or nothing. And that's just quite simply not the way that health has to be. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot you guys back a little bit and show you how I layer the grapes in here and just kind of gently set the lid on. And then we're gonna put it in the crisper drawer on the fruit setting in the refrigerator. Green apples are washed. I'm just going to dry them off one by one just to make sure everything is nice and dry so they don't get soggy. And then what I do is I just put them, you guys have seen this bowl before, I just put all of the apples around this bowl and that way it's easy for the kids to grab and go. Similar to the apples, I keep citrus fruit in another one of these large bowls just so it's open and ready to use. I do pre-wash all of it, obviously, to make it convenient. But for the small like cuties, clementines, oranges, lemons, limes, I'll just put all of that in another large size bowl. It's open, you can see what you have. When you see something, it's ready to grab and go you're more likely to eat it, hence why packaged snacks can sometimes be really hard to break through that habit because we're used to the convenience. So I always feel if we make all foods convenient, we remove some of that friction when it comes to healthy eating. The dill right here to the left of me, yum, smells so good. Like out of all of the fresh herbs, I feel like dill, well mint is another one, but just the smell of dill, I'm like, I can just envision everything that I want to cook and prepare with that fresh dill. Speaking of that, I get this question a lot, like, well, what produce do I buy? What produce do you buy on a regular basis? This one I'll put here up in the car, it's about 10 foods that I buy every week. Then I did a video last fall on 10 foods I buy every single week that are amazing for hormone health because here on my channel, in my practice, I definitely focus on women's health and hormone recovery after having children. So the question I get is what foods do I buy? What foods should I buy on a regular basis? And if you're a member of Living Well and perhaps you've forgotten, or if you are a new member to Living Well, so in the success path, when you click on that video, which is super helpful, Kaya is outside behind me sawing through wood, so I'm so sorry if you can hear that in the background but we're gonna just keep going. So in the success path, if you watch that video, there is an accompanying PDF. And if you go to slide four, you'll see that I've created a grocery store shopping list for you. This is something that you guys have asked me for for years. And so when I launched the membership area, and if you're new here, that's what Living Well is, it's my membership area where you can get access to hundreds of recipes, clickable and shoppable supplement links, it's more than you could imagine and I feel very proud of it and I work every single week to continue to evolve that platform. But as a quick reminder to everybody, you do have this grocery store shopping list. So when you're going to the store and you're thinking of what produce that you want to get, you can either A, follow along with my weekly meal plan and we can eat the same foods together, which is one of my favorite things, or you could just follow this grocery store list and buy your own produce. But I encourage you that if you're not following the meal plan, then this video where you're at today is definitely for you because if you go and you buy all of that beautiful produce and you don't have a particular meal plan in mind, I want to be sure that you use it. That's a reminder for you and a reminder for me as well. So we're gonna go ahead and finish drying off the dill. Then there's a few different ways we can store the fresh herbs. 
You can put them in a glass. I'll put here some B-roll on the screen. You can put them in a flat glass container with a paper towel. You can put them in a stasher bag with a paper towel, or if you're going to be using them relatively quickly, which is what I do, I would say five days, then you can go ahead and put them in like a large glass jar. I'm just using a 32 ounce mason jar. Fill it up with water and then put your stems of your herbs in there. If you put them in a glass container, you also have to use them pretty darn quickly unless you switch out the paper towel, which does keep it nice and fresh. But we go through herbs so fast. Sometimes I need to buy two to three bundles of dill and parsley every week because of how quickly we go through it. So I just got some fresh ginger yesterday that I had washed and already added to this bag, but I did notice that the paper towel is already damp. So I'm gonna swap out the paper towel to have a fresh one in here with the ginger. Or you can also, if you're going to use the ginger quickly, like if you're going to make the lemon ginger tonic or put it in one of your smoothies, you could just put it on top of like your apples or your citrus fruit so it's out invisible. But if you buy like a larger amount and you know you're not going to use it for the first like three or four days, I would recommend either putting it in a glass container with a lid and a paper towel or in like a small stasher bag or reusable Ziploc bag. So I'm going to swap this out, then we're gonna wash some parsley and chop and wash our cabbage. We're making some good progress. I'm going to chop up this purple cabbage and get that soaking prior to putting it into the containers. And while it's soaking, I'm going to make myself a cappuccino or a latte. And that's what I wanted to tell you guys that it's a process. I know it's a process and it's easy to feel fatigued. So I add in little things that make me excited. I even do this with just ingredient prepping. So meaning if I was cooking a whole cup of quinoa, cooking a whole cup of lentils or rice, if I was baking up some chicken thighs, like this is essentially like a little tiny mini version of my ingredient prep that I use for there, making my meals and putting together my meal plan. So. During that time, I like to make it enjoyable. I like to listen to an audiobook or a podcast or watch a YouTube video. I love Lydia Elise Millen and her videos are nice and long. I prefer longer videos, that way I can just set it up, have it in front of me as I go on about my ingredient prepping or storing produce properly. So let's make a quick latte, get a little extra pep in our step while our cabbage is soaking.
latte in hand, even though it is the afternoon, but that's okay. Get a little extra boost, bring in all of the joy. Now, as far as storing dried goods, I get this question a lot, whether it's about lentils, rice, or quinoa, but for me, I am a huge fan, and I shared this two weeks ago in a Costco haul. We're a huge fan of the Costco quinoa. I've been eating quinoa for over 15 years, and there is just no other quinoa that tastes as good as this Kirkland's quinoa. But what we'd like to do is I've been using these IKEA 365 jars since long before I had Sawyer, so over five years. Um, and I like to put them into these jars just to keep everything nice and fresh. We actually cooked the last half cup last night. So I just quickly dumped out a few of the crumbs. I'm going to add in a fresh bag of the quinoa into here. For me, having the quinoa, rice, lentils, dried beans decanted and ready to go, is really helpful because I can grab it. I don't have to worry about grabbing the bag and then measuring from the bag. It's just super convenient. And also I do like the snap lids, which you saw me use on these, on the carrots and celery. I do like the snap lids. I feel as though it keeps the food fresh for longer, but with the way our pantry is, if I set multiple of these jars next to each other, so if I set this next to brown rice, because of the snap closure, it's almost my shelving is almost not deep enough. So I do have to use the bamboo top lids, which look really great, but they're not quite as airtight as those ones, but it's fine. We go through our quinoa pretty darn quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and dump all of this into here, put the lid on. It does close out the air. It has the rubber sealant on the side. It's just not a snap closure. So we all know how bananas come with like this little bit of plastic on the top of them. If you've ever wondered what it's for, it's to actually help them last longer. So bananas omit ethanol gas from the top of their stem. So when you get home, if you take a little bit of plastic food wrap, I kind of like to fold it in half like this, and then I wrap it completely around the stem, the base, and all the way over the top of our bananas so that they stay fresh. You can see I got these yesterday from Whole Foods and they were borderline green, but because it's like 90 degrees, they're already starting to turn. So getting this here on top will help extend the life of your bananas by like four days. Now bananas do go bad faster depending on the climate, the time of year, all of those things, but this is definitely a trick and a hack that I use every week to help our bananas last a little bit longer. Then, of course, when they do start to brown, you can either, one, use them in one of many baking recipes that I've shared here on my channel. I will link some of those for you up here in the cards, but I have, I mean, at this point, I can only imagine how many recipes I have. It has to be nearly 100 different baking recipes that are all refined sugar-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. Most of them, some of them do have some butter. But if you want and your bananas start to go brown, you can always use it in some form of a baked good. Otherwise, I had to say, there can't be a single video that goes by where we don't talk about smoothies. Otherwise, what you can do is you can take the bananas, you can break them up and put them in a reusable bag, I would let out all of the air and throw it into your freezer. You can use these frozen bananas for smoothies or even for sweet, delicious treats like banana and ice cream. I love to make banana and ice cream with the kids. I'll use frozen banana, frozen zucchini. They absolutely love it when we add frozen zucchini because they can't tell, but it really helps with the texture. So some frozen banana, frozen zucchini. You can use some vanilla extract, some maple syrup, some vanilla bean. All of that is delicious. So as we're in the warmer months and we're definitely wanting to cover the stem of the bananas, if they do start to brown, you can absolutely still use them in a ton of different recipes.
So because my cabbage is still a little bit wet, I'm putting dry paper towel in, but if your cabbage is completely dry, I would recommend just even adding like three drops, like drips of water, just to have a tiny bit of moisture underneath the cabbage. Next, I'm gonna share with you tips on storing herbs other than what we already did earlier in either the stasher bag with a damp towel or a dry towel or in a large mason jar with water. I've got some other tips and tricks and this is also really good for herbs that are kind of on their way out. But before we do that, the kids just came home from school and I'm often asked about what the kids do when I'm filming the videos and one, most of the time they're at camp. If I'm filming one day per week, it's the day that they're at camp. But if they are home, like today, they just got home from camp, I do like to set up resourceful activities that help them play independently and that also help them relax and unwind after camp. I'm not sure about you guys, but when they come home from school or camp, I say it's like the fire hose where all of the emotions that they've pent up from their time of being at camp that they've held in or at school, come out. So I like to set up activities that help them unwind and relax while also getting out that energy. And if you've watched my channel for any period of time, then you know I'm a huge fan of the Love Every Play Kits. Love Every is truly a game changer here in our house because it's all creative base play that is rooted in Montessori skills and tactics. Both of my children went to Montessori school, so I still goes to Montessori and Ronan's there right now for summer camp. So Montessori is really incredible because it's so hands-on and tactile, and the play kits are made from the most amazing, sustainable tools that really help your children flourish and bring their imagination to life. And I am so excited because Love Every and I have teamed up and we are doing a giveaway for one of you. So if you are interested in joining in on this giveaway, and I, I cannot tell you how much joy these kits bring to our lives. They truly are a lifesaver, whether it's on a snow day or on a Sunday that we kind of want to hang out, kind of want to get some things done around the house and we don't want to have the screen on. If I get each of the kids out a play kit, they will sit and play with it for nearly two hours. I don't know about you, but that is worth every single penny to me. And also my son Ronan, who's seven and a half years old, will still sit and play with the play kits because they are open-ended, creative, imagine-based play. So if you are interested in joining in on the giveaway, all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also subscribe to the Love Every channel and comment down below on this video. And once you've done all of that, I will message the winner down below directly and let you know that you are indeed the winner of a Love Every play kit of your choice. So I am so excited. These play kits have truly revolutionized independent thought provoking play in our home. Both Kai and I are huge fans of this style of play. The kids utilize the kits in different ways, in more imaginative ways than you could even comprehend. And that's why we love this open-end style of play. So we're gonna quickly get the kids set up with their new play kit. Then we're gonna jump back over here and do our herb infused ice cubes. So if you have herbs that are on their way out, one of my favorite things to do is to make herb infused ice cubes. And if you haven't seen my video that I did all about my meal planning process, set up all of the things, I linked it earlier in the video, but I will put it for you up here in the cards, um, how I make herb infused waters as well. So that's another great hack, but these ice cubes are one of our favorites. And because I'm doing it in the little bunnies, which the kids love, the kids will drink these as well. So I can put it in their water when I send them off to camp, it keeps them hydrated. And it also provides amazing herbal healing benefits. We've got vitamin C, we've got calcium, we've got zinc, and also relaxation when it comes to the basil. So I like to make these little herb infused waters in the bunnies because it's cute and the kids love it. So if your herbs are on their way out, here's another great way to store your produce. And if you don't wanna do ice cubes, another way, another tip for storing them is that you could fill these up 
And then you also could drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil and minced garlic, pop it into the freezer, use that, save that in a stasher bag, and you could use these as starters on your pans whenever you're sauteing and cooking. That's another huge favorite of ours. But because we still are in the warmer months, this is one of my favorite things to do in the fall and winter. I'm more likely to make the herb infused olive oil frozen bits just because I'm making more soups and stews. want to thank you all so much for watching and be sure to enter the love every giveaway you can do so by commenting liking this video subscribing to my channel and to love every's channel i will have all of the giveaway details for you in the description box down below as well as the first pinned comment and if you liked this video you can let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and now the subscribe button is right over here on the screen Give that a click, that way you don't miss a single video, and I hope to see you back here next Thursday.